Hello everyone, this is Matt Hughes from Total Justice Gaming. Today I'm here to do a special video about BattleCon War of Indians by Level 99 Games. Uh, because Jesse and Joe have not played the game very much yet, I brought along with me two special guests. There are UFS players, one of which you all know, Jeffrey Kahn, and another one of our local friends, uh, Brian Rainadu. Uh, they're going to be talking to me about BattleCon, and help me review the game a bit and talk about it. It's a really fun game. Uh, Brad sent it out to me because there's that UFS ending set uh, coming out hopefully by the end of April. And I wanted to review their game. He wanted me to review the game. So he sent me a copy of War of Endings. So we're going to open it up, take a look what's inside, give you a rough idea of how to play the game, and then just talk about it for a while. Uh, first oh, off... yeah. Yeah. Uh, first off, the game UFS is a card game that's supposed to simulate a fighting game, where BattleCon is a board game that simulates a fighting game. So first we've got the 2D board you play on. Uh, you play cards that are, have actions on them that allow you to move around on the board here. It has spots for discard piles uh, on it for your cards ready to go, which we'll explain in a minute. And for the person who can never remember the steps... Uh, it shows all the steps of the turn on it there, which we'll go over in a second once I show off all the cards. And it has a nice little rule book. Uh, it has a comic in it to teach you how to play the game uh, for the basics, which is really neat, which I think UFS should do at some point. Uh, a little fighter guidebook, which gives you an overview of how the characters play. Uh, a little tiny character select screen, basically. Showing off all their difficulties. Um, two bars to keep track of people's uh, life totals. Uh, this are arena cards, which I have not opened yet since it's still sealed. Can one of you explain to me what these are? Uh, yeah, I, I can take yeah. that one. Right. Uh, arena cards are pretty much like little stadium effects. They give like if you're playing like mortal Kombat, for instance the fighting game the each stage in that um in that game has different like stage effects that happen mm -hmm. if you play with the arena cards in battle con you pretty much get that effect um it's kind of i guess similar to like if we're going to like magic the gathering it's kind of like plane chase cards yeah. where they're or, little uh or like the gives arena global cards effects the arena cards in pokemon yeah, yeah, stadium cards and Pokemon, pretty much as well. Yep, uh, just they give a a global thing that happens, and sometimes different. And like, yeah, there's a bunch of different ones. Like one of them, there's like one where like the ground starts earthquaking from under view, and the board gets smaller. That's pretty crazy. Really neat, and <laughs> I'm gonna want to try that at some point. But back to the rest of the box. Um, there are 18 in War of Indians, 18 total characters in the base game. And here is a bunch of the stand-ups that all have beautiful artwork showing off each of the characters. Here's one of my favorite guys, uh, Demetros. He's a, uh, vampire fencer from, as far as I can tell. Here's one of the guys coming out in the Indian set, Cadenza which a lot of people are hyped for because he's a clockwork robot that just stands around and beats the crap out of people. <laughs> um, and then every single character in this game has their own unique ability, and lots of them use lots and lots of tokens. So there's like 20, 30 different tokens in here for all these different characters. Um, one of my favorites, which is uh, Hikaru, he has a bunch of different tokens for the different elements, and he can uh, ante, which means just like discard them as a cost uh, at the start of the turn to gain some effect. Uh, another one is uh, Rukyuk, who's a uh, long-range fighter who has different ammo. And then the big part of the game is, I'll lift up this box, hopefully not knock everything over all of these cards that come in the game. Each character gets their own unique sets of cards to show off their own unique attacks that they have in the game, along with their unique abilities. So we're going to show off just the basic idea of how this game works. Uh, at the start of each turn, 
Uh, you select a style card, which is any of the cards that come with your character, basically, and a base card, which an example is like these cards down here are bases. Uh, they're generic things like strike, shot, grasp. They're like just generic attacks that you would do. Uh, they all have their own range, power, and priority. Range is how far across the board you can hit, power is damage, and priority decides uh, who gets to attack first. Um, you pair them up. Here's a style example for Hikaru, which uh, they'll add their own modifiers to those threes and have their own unique effect. Um, so you would take the two, put them face down. Like here, it would create a geomantic strike. Uh, and then your opponent would put them face down. Whoever has the higher priority goes first. Uh, before, right before you flip them over, you do that anti-step. Like, Hikaru would put one of his tokens. Like, he has the fire one adds damage. Or the earth one can make it so you uh, prevent three damage for the turn. And then start of beat effects are turns. So start a beat. Those effects happen. Then you do your attack. Uh, if you're hit and you take damage... Uh, you get stunned unless there's some effect in the game. For example, the main one is Stun Guard, which prevents you from being hit so you can strike back. Uh, characters, on top of all this, to make them more unique besides their abilities and their styles, each one also gets their own unique base. So you could have something even more to shake up the game. Um, all in all, between the unique ability and their unique cards uh, and all the tokens and everything, it makes it so each character... Uh, has their own unique way to play, and there's a bunch of different ways to play each one. And then there's 18 characters in the base set alone. I still, I've had this for two months now, trying to get the recording done for this, and I still haven't touched half the characters in the base game. This might be because I went and bought one of the expansions, Fate, which I liked as much, and I'm getting Devastation in the mail. Uh, now that I've gone over the basis of how to play this game i will allow my two friends here to talk about the game for a little bit since they've been patient and quiet <laughs> so we'll start off first with uh what brought you guys uh to battlecon start with uh, geo jeff uh well for me it was um ufs was promoting their kickstarter and i went and i checked it out and and uh i really liked the look of it and the characters and everything and uh, then when I actually got to play it, I, I found I really enjoyed it. It was very different from uh, a lot of other uh, fighting game, sim uh, fighting game simulating games that I've played. Yeah. Um, a big thing I've seen with other ones, because I actually, after looking at this, I looked into a few others. There's another one called Yomi or something, I think. A lot of them just use a very basic, it feels like, rock, paper, scissors system. Mm-hmm. Which, this kind of has something, too, but it steps it up with Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock. You had to make that reference, huh? Well, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> the chart that I just pulled up, that's exactly what it is. Well, I... is <laughs> each one can beat two. Yeah. Um, which, it's it's an actual, it's not like it came from uh, Big Bang Theory or anything. This is an actual thing that was created by people yeah. at MIT. <laughs> but... Back to this. Brian, what brought you to Battlecon? Uh, well, um, one of my friends that played UFS uh, kick, did kickstart it, and uh, I was like told, that, oh, it's a fighting game in board game form. I'm like, all right, sounds cool. We'll check it out. Uh, so he kickstarts it, and we get it, and I open it up, and I start just reading some of the characters. I'm like, all right, let's test this thing out, and went from there been pretty awesome since yeah and of course i got in because of jeff once he got it i got to start looking at it. like it was one of those i looked at it, i'm like ah oh, this is neat i don't have the time i'm too invested in ufs and other things <laughs> come back to it all right i'll try this all right, this is fun <laughs> and now i've just gotten to the point where okay this game's really really fun and now oh, they've been doing more uh story aspects to the game yeah like uh the backdrop we have here you can see part of it is the map of their uh, main part of the Indians universe. Um, and, like, story and flavor stuff is one of my favorite things. Like, in card design, when I, I like top-down design. Mm -hmm. 
And that really, you can feel it here. Like, you look at a character's story, you look at how they play, and it looks really well together. Which mm-hmm. is why I'm excited for the UFS Indian set. Because I'm hoping that they'll translate a, those effects very well. Um, and as we're talking about abilities and mechanics and games here, what's your guys' favorite part of the game? Part. Like, yeah, hmm. like your favorite mechanic or... Like, what do you uh... like... I, I gave them a trick. I may have given them a little <laughs> curveball oh. here. Like, hey, like, like, do you like the fact? I'll, I'll give some examples. <laughs> sure, um, sure. Do you like that rock paper scissors the Spock thing with the bases, or do you like um, the unique effects? Do you like the uniqueness of every character? Oh, or, yeah, that, that's a big thing for people. Yeah, actually, um, yeah, the unique, the uniqueness was uh, is actually something I really enjoy because yeah. it's not like. Uh, any like this character is just like another variation of this character. It's it's a more of a, a lot of the character that actually it seems like every character plays very differently from the other uh, from another one. Like yeah. no two characters play exactly the same, and, um, or even at times even close to. And another thing I know you like, but you may not know it. <laughs> um, I probably said it or uh, no, it. <laughs> is um the fact that. You don't have to build a deck in this game like UFS. Yeah. You just pick a character and go. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. Everything is given to you. Um, probably for me, I'd have to say definitely the uniqueness of every character. There And there's so many of them. And that, and in, like, the crazy... On the amount of characters they are, each one is different. Like, none of them are the same. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then also, probably the gameplay aspect for me... Uh, it's, uh, we haven't gotten onto it yet, but every character has a card that, uh, has a, it's a, it's a reference card is on, on the character and, uh, it gives information of every one of their attacks and, uh, and every one of their styles because each player gets the same bases and, um, each of their finishing moves as well. And you have to give that card to your opponent prior to starting the game. So each of you have perfect information. So like my fa- like my so the game comes down to a lot of mind games and counter manipulation of like what they're doing to you, what you're doing, oh, yes. and that's probably my favorite aspect of the game. Yeah, that was another thing I was gonna bring up before. Uh, perfect information and just being able to know everything. I like it a lot. Unfortunately, a lot of the games I've been playing, I've just been trying to learn my own character so much <laughs> that I don't take advantage of that very well. Like yeah. I kind of just for the first few for the first uh, kind of pick you. <laughs> yeah, for, not even for the first few for the for your first probably quite a few games, you'll be learning your characters probably before <laughs> learning how to counterplay on other characters as well as you're learning your characters. Like, There's so think, many. I don't yeah, think I've I don't played think... a single character more than three times. Yeah, I've only just started playing some characters for like a second or third time. I mean, and I still haven't played every character at least once. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, to give people an idea, there's 18 in the base game, uh, 10 more in a smaller expansion called Fate of Indians, and then yeah. the big one, Devastation of Indians, Devastation. has 30 characters. 30. <laughs> I'm eagerly awaiting that in the mail, so that way I don't have to wait for Jeff to show up for when a bunch of us at my house want to play. <laughs> well, you mean specifically want to play with the Devastation Yeah, character. with Devastation, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, and now we'll get on since we all love the uniqueness and the characters in this game. Yeah, what's your favorite <laughs> character, Jeff? Um, to be fair, well, any of the three well, out of any of them. Um, there's uh, really one of my favorites that has to be uh, Jaeger. Um, he has like a pool, he's very unique. His one unique thing is he has a uh, like four additional cards that he sets aside and he gets to just uh anti he can anti one of them to replace his attacks with uh, with that attack and they're all like mini like like supers 
and we should talk about supers since you brought that up. More finishers. That's finishers. Right. finishers yeah. Um, that's another thing. In addition to all these cards and these tokens that we've shown you, there's also finishers, just like in fighting games. Yep. Um, they have different <laughs> ways to play them. Um, you can the most basic generic way is uh, all of them. You have to be seven or less life in order to yep. do them. Uh, and the main way they originally had it is you would just take your super card, which has its own attack, pri like range, priority, and damage, and its own effects, and you'd anti it at start of turn. Yep. That's what they originally did it as. Um, but realized that was kind of eh, because then your opponent can see the super coming. Right. Um, so they made a special little card, a special action card, and the main way they do it now is they have a force gauge system, which is kind of like just like any kind of, kind like of super Street meter. Fighter yeah. Ultra meter, yep. <laughs> yeah, the Ultra meter from any of the games, and you get a token. You get one at end of every turn, and then what you can do is you can pay from that meter equal to your life total when you play that when you play the card out of no as your ante, and then you can do your super there. So it comes out of nowhere. Yeah, and Jeff's character. Um, it's a little bit different. He gets as like the old anti rule where you're just like, all right, uh, I'm gonna do this attack this turn instead of well, my attack there. They actually go face down. They go face down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, I haven't not. I've only played against him like once, and I forgot. Yeah. yeah like. <laughs> and he's. Yeah. yeah he's, he's really fun. Yeah. Uh, Brian, what's your favorite character all of them? Oh man, there's so many. Um, I have quite a few that I really like, but. Right now, my probably favorite, um, ironically to Jeff, uh, who, whose favorite is Jaeger, I like the character from Devastations, uh, Karen and Jaeger. Yeah. <laughs> um, what uh, they do uh, is Jaeger is like a werewolf. Uh, and it with Karen and Jaeger, he's kind of like her little protector and like kind of guardian pet i think is the lore behind them yeah uh when one's and, a werewolf the other is a human and yeah. vice versa yeah and uh what they do is uh she gets a to uh, a token that she puts on the map with her and can move it around the map and that's a uh, jaeger and uh her styles that she has um some of them calculate the attack range from Jaeger's position on the board rather than hers. Uh, sometimes some of her styles are the between the positioning of her and Jaeger on each side or behind or in front. And uh, one of her finishers actually uh, does... Uh, you get 20 health in this game. This attack does 12 damage mm -hmm. and uh, oh, it can only hit if you and Jaeger are uh, pincering the opponent. Like yeah. that's the the yes. hit range of it. But like you do over half of their health in one attack with that finisher. Pretty devastating. Uh, as for me, I have a lot of characters, and actually we got to play a lot the other night. Of the characters <laughs> I haven't used, so my ideas on this game have changed so much. <laughs> um, I think like flavorfully like hikaru is still one of my favorite right uh because i like the idea of anteing different tokens uh for, like i like token management or and uh like item card management i guess more than tokens in play yeah uh so he can switch back and forth by gaining and by uh regaining his tokens and spending them between adding damage or attacking faster or having soak three, which allows you to reduce your damage. Um, which he's just he's a very nice brawler character, uh, who's very flexible in what he can do. Um but I think playstyle wise so far right now, I played this really weird character the other night, uh Clive Melmont. <laughs> Um, Mega Man. Who's supposed to be like this robot kid? He's Mega yeah, Man. He's Mega yeah. Man. Uh, he has uh, nine different modules, which are cards that you have face down that each give tiny effects that you can flip one up and turn it on 
uh, one each turn during the anti step. And you can just keep on turning them on, one additional one each turn, uh, until you get hit. Once you get hit and, and it gets stunned, uh, they are, all the ones that are active get removed from the game. So if you could just play intelligently and keep on not getting stunned by using stun guard, you just make yourself stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Yeah. But um, Hikaru's definitely I like. I just like the idea of him. <laughs> um, I can't wait to see what he does in UFS. And to talk about that a little bit, uh, Untold Justice Gaming, we did some spoilers a couple months back. Uh, there was an update from Jasco Games where they're changing the set a bit uh, because they thought a few of the cards didn't fit with the meta and they didn't fit flavorfully very well. Uh. So they're changing the cards. Hopefully they'll get really better. It's the same characters. Hopefully the effects will be even better. And all I know is Hikaru better still have four symbols. Because <laughs> that, that was my favorite card of everything that got spoiled. Ew. He wasn't incredibly strong, but... He four symbols perfect. and definitely being four... an elementalist uh, mm. scene makes sense. <laughs> yeah. uh, and just to give people a little idea of what that's going to look like, here's a picture of the one of the starter decks. Uh, it's got really beautiful art. Like They have the map of Indians for the background. It's supposed to be coming out at the end of April. So while we don't know any actual cards anymore, we know officially... That there's going to be 42 fixed cards, which are going to be like a turbo deck, basically, where it's 40 plus the character for all their cards. Uh, and then the promo character that goes with them will go with it. So I'm thinking maybe, I think Cadenza shared symbols with him. So he might come, Ikaro might come with 40 cards for himself, his character, then Cadenza. Nice. And then they have 18 random rares. That are going to be in the rest of the deck. Sweet. Rare, rare for lack of a better term. Because it's a starter deck only set. Mm. Uh, but it's 18 of 35 possible ones. Okay. And I did some math. If you just buy two of every deck, which you're going to want to do anyways, because all these characters are awesome. <laughs> yep. uh, then you'll probably get close to every single card. Uh, if not, you can just do a little bit of trading with your friends. I know Jeff and I, we each planning uh, to get one, and then we'll just do a little bit of trading and yep. have everything have we everything need. Have everything we need, yeah. yeah. It's always good. <laughs> and if there's any extras left over, I I want to get players into this game. <laughs> yeah. Indians is really fun. Yep. UFS is really fun. I love that we're getting these two together. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, so now, because I'm trying to keep this to around a half hour, I'll just give the last bit uh, for you guys to just talk about your experiences of the game a bit. Oh. So, uh, Brian, just like talk about like your favorite thing you've done in the game so far. Fate or your favorite part of it. Fate, fate. Your favorite. All right. Favorite thing you've done. Be the best thing that I've done in this game was <laughs> we were playing. Uh, me and my friend Corey were playing a game, and uh, we got down to it, and I was playing. The character Rookyuk, uh, who Hughes mentioned earlier, uh, has ammo. And how it works is he has to ante one of his ammos every turn. He gets six different ammo, uh, six different bullets, rather, there we go, of his ammo. Uh, and he has to ante one of them each turn, or he's unable to hit with his attack. Uh, there is a, a special little thing in this game. Uh, that if you tie with priority in a turn, you have to do this clash function. And what you do is you pretty much, uh, whatever base you played is null, but that style stays in play face up. And you can't, you ha both have to play another base face down. Uh, to, and, and then continue the beat from there um not having access to that one base uh, which you will get back at the end of the turn instead of it going to your discard pile it comes back to your hand at the end of the turn if a clash happens but uh Rukyuk has a special his special base his unique base is reload which allows you to get back all of your 
ammo tokens back into your ammo pool. Uh, I went for a reload. On two, I had, I still had two ammo tokens in my in my uh, pile. He canceled it, so it went to the graveyard, and I wasn't able to get it till later, two more turns. Because uh, cancels one of the special action cards that just uh, oh, right. deletes out using one a of those. Um, deletes out your opponent's attack. Attack for the turn. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then I have to go two more turns because there's two different discard piles, and you have to cycle your discard piles each turn, uh, and you you get it. And I go to reload again now with no bullets because I've had to use my other two bullets, and we clash. <laughs> So now, <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's unfortunate. <laughs> so then we go again, and we clash a second time. <laughs> I have, I, and so this is three, almost three turns now that I don't have yeah. access to do damage to him because I am out of bullets. That is, oh. And then for the third time, I, I, I made sure to look over his reference card and to make sure which bases he had. And I played a cancel on his next pair to assure that I could not clash with him to get my reload off. And then I wound up winning that game in a few turns afterwards. Nice. <laughs> that was the best thing, though. That, that's the craziest thing that's ever happened in this game is like the three clashes yeah. in a row and then playing around clashing just to get my reload off. Yeah. Craziest yeah. thing that's happened in this game for me. Yeah, so you want to talk clashing, just play against um, the what's her face? Cherry? Yeah. Yeah, oh, the, cla the forces the, clashes. The force clash, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a big thing I've learned with this game. Don't get discouraged no matter what happens. There are probably actually a few of these times that I've like just flipped the table and quit. That I probably could have come back and won. Who knows? Well, I can think of <laughs> one where you almost you wanted to actually start the game over, and then you actually came close to winning it. Yeah, I came very close to winning with one match. And that's actually my thing I'm going to share is actually me getting destroyed in that match in the beginning. <laughs> um, there is a character I have a devastation who has little robot counters uh, named, uh, her name's Aria. Ah, droids, yes. And she has a card that if you start the turn on top of a specific one, you get plus four priority. Yeah. His character, <laughs> as he's already laughing, uh, gets bonuses or other effects based upon the difference in priority between the two players. Uh, was it Lim or Lin? Lim. Yeah, it was Lim. Yeah. Um, I only skimmed his reference card looking at numbers, and I'm like, all right, I'm probably fine. The bottom one, which coincidentally was the one he decided to start the game with, says disparity, which the effect is called, 8 plus, you become the active player. Oh, and I, like, teleport right next. Oh, yeah, and he teleports right on top of me. Yeah. So I go from, I'm surely going to go before him, I'm going to make my attack, and then I'm going to run out of range and drop another droid that says he can't hit me this turn. And then, nope, he goes active player and smashes me for like six on turn one. Yep. Because I don't have power bonuses. <laughs> and I still, I got down to like two. Yeah, it was it pretty came close. very close. But, it, but then I hit you with the same thing when you tried to dodge, a uh, uh, dash, I mean. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just can't play around that card, apparently. I was playing the character... I, the way I had set up the game with that character was to have really high priority, and it just wasn't working against that character. Yeah. No. <laughs> but live and learn. I'll know not to do that next time against Giggles. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's something you like that you've had from your experiences so far, Jeff? Um... Oh. Um... <laughs> I gave him a tough question. Well, you gave me some question because that was the moment I was. That was probably his moment. I was like, um, I was saying, well, you actually, guys shared yeah. that one. Um, <laughs> I, well, the one thing I can think of, like a bunch of, uh, oh, oh, who, who, I'm trying. Who was I playing as when you were playing as, uh, what was it, Oriana? 
Yeah. And like you went you went all out with all your mana and I just went like just smacked you and went just like no or or just dodged you and or what was it? I I somehow negated you getting your mana back. What was that exactly? I don't remember what you did. <sighs> <laughs> played way too we many... played a lot of games so at many... this point. Yeah, um, like if, the one if, that if you're I... able to cancel Oriana, Oriana's a character who spends all of her mana points to do something. Like she's she's like a high risk, high reward character. And if if you get her to use all her mana points and you nullify it. She's yeah. in the tough spot. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I don't remember exactly what I did, but it's like he, he was just all like, "Well, there went all my mana. I can't do anything now." <laughs> yeah, I cashed yep. in everything. That was the issue. Is I cashed in on everything, and then spent the rest <clears throat> of the turn where all my regained mana abilities he kept canceling in some way. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but actually, one thing of... I, one thing I, I've noticed is that a lot of my games pretty close like i don't feel that yeah. sore when i lose because i've usually it's like yeah. oh there was just this i'm like i just made one mistake here or there and it's like it, it was still just overall just like a close game it wasn't like yeah. i just got trounced it was well yeah. like, every yeah. game that i've played one has or two, been actually. fun every game i've played has been fun oh yeah uh even when you lose the game is fun that's why I gotta learn. That's why I've, I've learned not to just rage quit. Um, Except the good sh- uh, cherry. <laughs> yeah, cherry. But even the community is the great. She's a little bit strong. Oh, jeez, yeah. man! It's it gets so annoying when you go clash, clash, clash. Yep. Oh man. But that's just something we just need to learn to play around. Yeah. Yeah, like I told oh. you, my craziest moment, and I wasn't against Cherry in this one. We actually just kept playing the same priority moves three clashes in a row when I was trying to reload. <laughs> so. uh, that'll actually happen, I've noticed. Like, you'll sometimes just get in the, you and your opponent will get in the same mindset, and all of a sudden, for like X turns in a row, the first like moves you throw down clash. So, a few things to help people out with the game. Uh, there's one player in the community who I think is also a playtester who does uh, guide videos on some basics on how to play the game. And he's done one for almost every single character in the game. Uh, it's called Battle Guides. Uh, here's the link above is on YouTube. Uh, you can just search up Battle Guides if you can't read this properly up here. Um, it's really fun. There's like... 30, 40 hours worth of videos that he's committed to it, which is a bit much. But if you can find the character you like, you can spend 20 minutes watching that video. He's got some really good tips for people. Uh, we're also, we recorded a gameplay video so you could get an idea of what the game is like. So you can watch uh, my friend Ben and Jeff playing uh, with some characters that are going to be in the ending set and me commenting during it. And we hope to do more videos beyond that uh, over the next coming weeks. Um, if you like this video, uh, like, comment, subscribe to it and to Total Justice Gaming. Either of you guys got anything else you want to say about BattleCon? Besides, go get it. I was going <laughs> to say, go get it and play it, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Have fun. Make unique make di- try it try multiple different fighting styles with all your characters that you try and test things out see how it goes yeah. and if you want to hear if you want to know about any of other uh level 99 stuff we hope to be working with brad to bring more of them to you uh so just shoot me a message if you want to know any more about BattleCon. i'm always willing to talk about this game this is one of the few games in the past decade that has gotten my attention. Yeah. So that's it, and have a good night, folks. So long. Bye.